When I'm not pitching my failed Hallmark Christmas movie ideas, I like to answer questions that I get on YouTube, so let's get to it. Actually, for real, you should check out the video of me actually trying to hard sell pitch some of these Hallmark movie ideas on, on the other channel. And uh, I'll link you to that because I think it turned out pretty great. Let me know what you think. Sean's like me, I literally can't bring myself to learn all five positions of the pentatonic, just major and minor. Someone needs to do a vid on how to really incorporate the other three unwanted, unused ones. I take offense to you saying that they're unwanted and unused because I, like a lot of people, have a couple, it's like a combination of different things for the way that I see the fretboard. Minor pentatonic is kind of like, will always be kind of like the Mac Daddy visual way that I see uh, the fretboard, just because that's like what I learned and what I became so ingrained in. And it's hard, it's actually probably impossible for me to remove the minor pentatonic from my, you know, vocabulary of sorts. But really, there's only two pentatonic positions that I use, and it's not minor and major, okay? It's actually pentatonic position five, which I actually did a whole series on the pentatonic, uh, Mo or positions again. It's just like a free thing on YouTube, so I'll link you to that playlist too, because it get, it goes into more depth on each one. So I don't want to say any of them are unwanted or unused, but my favorite one, best one, absolutely best one. Right? The reason that I like that one the best is because the symmetry of it. Three five three five two five two five three five three five. It's really great. And now that I'm starting to incorporate more three notes per string stuff in my own personal playing, I think it's really great. And it also, it's kind of like rife for double stops. So again, just kind of like a rundown of the way that the kind of mixed up, juxtaposed way that I kind of see and kind of take approaches to lead playing is knowing where the relative minor is. Okay. So let's say I'm in the key of C. Knowing that A minor pentatonic is going to be like the fail safe that like. If it's one of these jam session type things that somehow I always find myself in and the the lead part has to be more than like two passes through, just whatever. Just hang out in minor pentatonic and wait until your turn is done. <laughs> but I think creatively, I love going from position five, taking two notes, double stopping into the different positions, specifically because it sits right on top of position one. That's kind of something that I do a lot of a lot of the time in my own playing. Now as far as major pentatonic, I personally only think of like the highest three strings when I go to like major pentatonic stuff. Like that kind of like uh, minor or ma major third to the root type thing. And then for everything else, I really kind of just think of like arpeggios and modes. So it's kind of funny because it's really just the evolution of it. It started out with something super simple for me. I feel like if I would have learned the full minor scale, major scale modes, I'd have, I'd have an easier time uh, doing a lot of this stuff. But again, just because I, I never had lessons, even when I was learning, YouTube wasn't even a thing yet. It just kind of became this, you know, this Frankenstein of different things going on in my head. But now, I'm definitely in a place where minor pentatonic, first and foremost, I have a better vocabulary through three notes per string and arpeggios, and that's just kind of like how I approach everything. But I will always have a special place in my heart for the double stop capabilities of position five. So, do it. Boomer style playing with zero substance in a crap tier voice. To which I replied, you misspelled super cool dude, slaying it like a beast. And then once he found out that he was called out, he rallied back with, This was just a joke, I hope you get it. The whole boomer on guitar joke is pretty rampant right now. <laughs> so, it's so funny, whenever you like call these like trolls out, sometimes they'll respond and be like, Oh crap, I can't believe like an actual human read that. Which is why you should never take offense to trolls, because like, it's never ever personal, but I love the fact that they're trying to spin it like, oh, the whole boomer guitar zero substance is like a rampant joke right now that you must not have like seen. Also too, a great thing is, that comment, uh, he left two comments in a row before I called him out. The other one was, please stop making videos, you're not smart. <laughs> I haven't replied to that one yet. But I'm sure it's like, oh, you didn't see that the please stop making videos you're not smart meme is like super rampant on YouTube comments right now. <laughs> Salty Blues comment of the week, nice try. Does a transmitter fit equally snug into strats and tellies? So this is actually a great question about the Boss Waza headphones that I kind of demoed last week. It has a transmitter that you plug in 
And it's a great question because if you don't have a Telecaster, if you've never had a Telecaster or you're thinking about getting a tel Telecaster, one thing is a lot of the plugs won't fit into the input. Now, the Boss one fits perfectly, but like I've seen with a lot of right angle plugs, I don't have a right angle plug that will actually fit into the Telecaster just because of like the way that the, the thing is made. A lot of times it'll pop out. So it's definitely something that if you're not an experienced Telecaster player, maybe you're thinking about getting one, or maybe you're going to like a gig where you know you're going to be playing one, keep in mind, just a pro tip, right angle plugs and Telecasters do not mix well. But, just as kind of a side note, the Boss one does fit perfectly. So yes, thank you for asking that because I wanted to clear that up. The Emerald Riders made my AirPods waterproof! Just another added advantage of listening to the new Celtic band that came out, the Emerald Riders, which is absolutely slaying it online, so... Thank you for all the support you guys have shown for that over the time that it's been out, and uh, keep it going. It'll always be linked in the description, and I'm pushing it hard, and there should be some live, live Rider stuff coming out soon, and more epic music videos. So Sean, care to weigh in on the great Twitter debate of the week? Immigrant song or cashmere? I think I'd go immigrant, but I feel like Meryl and Sophie's choice. Yeah, immigrant song versus cashmere is kind of tough. I, I will say from personal experience, if you would have asked me my first year, of really getting into Zeppelin, I would have been like, Immigrant Song, duh. If you would have asked me the second year of listening to Zeppelin, once I had a more refined Zeppelin palette, I would have been like, Cashmere, duh. But I think, again, tough choice. I'm gonna go, in, in hindsight, the totality of Zeppelin under my, under my belt now, Immigrant Song. There's something just so raw and powerful about Immigrant Song that elicits just this kind of like, just primal. Every time I hear Immigrant Song, I'm just like, yes. Whereas like, Cashmere, I would say is probably, I mean, it's definitely like a more in-depth piece of music, but I just think Immigrant Song is so awesome. No disrespect to Cashmere, obviously another great track, but I'm gonna be on Team Immigrant Song if you're making me choose, and it sounds like you are. So for listening homework, since it is kind of like a holiday week, uh, I'm gonna link you to Sting and his band absolutely slaying it. I think Sting's holiday music is probably my, my favorite stuff because it's just great and I love Sting. So check that out. Make sure you check out the Emerald Riders and the Lo-Fi Christmas album if you haven't already. And then definitely check out me pitching my failed rejected Hallmark movie ideas. Uh, again, because hopefully we can get one of those made with your help. So if you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, or the website. I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot.